All right, everybody. Uh, this is being released on Saturday. Hope you guys are all having a good weekend. A couple quick updates on the camper. But most notably, I wanted to bring you guys one more video because the look of this camper will be changing shortly because I am going to be applying the finish here in the next couple days. So I wanted to give you guys one final look of uh, how it looks in its natural state. Uh, but let me touch base on what I've gotten done and where I'm going. All right, so uh, what I left off last time was I've got the roof all fiberglassed. And as you guys remember, I had rolled the epoxy, or uh, I'm sorry, the resin and the gel coat just a little bit over on the edge of this wood. And as you guys can see, I've got a nice piece of trim that trims out all these areas and gives a nice, solid, uh, clean transition between the fiberglass roof and the rest of the wood body. Uh, I don't recall if this was in there before, but I, I did add some trim right here around this edge, and I've shaped it a little bit. Um, I do have uh, quite a bit of uh, sanding prep I still need to do, and I need to fill in some holes and stuff like that before I put on the finish. Um, so if you guys notice any little irregularities, that's what it is. Uh, right down here, I added, this is all just decorative trim, uh, just some trim along the wall here. Uh, my rationale there is just to give it a little bit of dimension to that wall. Um, and I think it looks nice um, to a lesser extent. Um, you know, keep in mind that this will, you know, the bed rail will be right there. So those, those little pieces of trim or planks there might in some regard give a little bit of extra protection to the walls. If, you know, if I run across any bushes or bump into something. But, but it's primarily just for decoration. All right, and I finished the door. Let's walk over here, and I'll give you guys a little bit of a different view of this door here. Sorry about that. So there is a door. Uh, I hand make all these doors. I'll pull it off here and flip it over and show you some of the innards here in a second. Uh, again, I added some trim. Just that's a little decorative design. It doesn't mean anything. I just uh, I've always used the uh, the doors as a little bit of a palette for some artistic expression. So I uh, just threw up some, uh, I don't know, it was just kind of random, just sitting there last night, just taking a look at the door, and I cut some pieces of wood and just trying a few things out. Actually, my daughter came out and helped me, and we were putting some stuff together. So just a little design on there, just for fun. And, of course, on this side, I've got those little pieces of trim down there. Um, now, these are not attached permanently. Um, these are, in fact, these are not even in the exact position, but I've got them laid out so they can kind of conform to the shape of the roof. But these are the solar panels I'm going to put on top. I was originally just going to put 200, so I'm sorry, let me back up. Each one of these are 100 watt. Uh, these are those Bouge RV, uh, they call them the SIG panels, C-I-G. Um, it stands, I don't remember what it is, it's an acronym for something. Uh, they're actually really good panels and they're actually pretty expensive too. Um, but from what I understand, Bouge RV, it actually, they're a proprietary panel to, uh, their company. I had tested one, uh, in fact, it's that middle one there, um, if I remember correctly, it was about a year ago, and they actually performed really well. Um, solar on this roof is kind of a unique challenge because it's curved, you obviously, you know, it's, it's got a nice curve in it, so I obviously don't want to put a, a rigid square panel up there and, um, uh, you know, break up that nice curve and hopefully some aerodynamic benefit. Um, I do understand that, you know, these panels are, are very long. Uh, so the, you know, sometimes part of, part of them are going to be in the sun. Sometimes part of them are not going to have direct sun. Um, I've actually tested uh, the, the one panel I've reviewed quite a bit. And they're, they're pretty amazing in terms of how they pick up the solar energy, even in a curve like that. So, um, but I had the one, uh, I went ahead and bought the two, so I'll have a total of 300 watts up there. Um, I'll put them up on the roof. Uh, they'll obviously maintain that aerodynamic profile, and uh, we'll see how they do. Um, other than running the AC, though, a uh, little camper like this shouldn't use a lot of energy, so I'm not too worried. I'm also going to wire in a external port. Um, this will be a review coming up, but I had a company who sent me a power bank and one of those uh, uh foldable panels like a suitcase solar panel um so i'll have I'll, I'll wire in an external port on this 
and I'll, uh, if I, if I go where I think I might have some issues with solar or for example, if these panels are not producing like I'll like, I'll, I'll bring that little suitcase panel with me. And if I'm at a camp or something, I need a little extra energy, I'll just plug it in. But, um, uh, over here on this door, um, cause like I said, I am going to apply the finish. Uh, I went ahead and pre-cut all of the, uh, or pre-mortised all these, uh, sections for the hinge. Um, I decided that I'm just going to put two hinges on here. This is a pretty short door. It's about 54 inches tall, a little bit over. Um, and it's very light. It's only, I don't know, it's probably 10 or 15 pounds. So um, the hinges I use, uh, these I just buy on Amazon. They're called a security hinge. So obviously I have, um, you know, the hinges are exposed to the exterior. So one common question I uh, people would ask is uh, you know how do you prevent people from popping out the pin and these security hinges uh, the pin is locked so that way since it's on the external side nobody could just pop the pin and pull the door off um, and those are there's a bunch of them on Amazon just search security hinges I've used a couple different brands they're real heavy duty they work out well uh, I also cut the hole uh, I'm going to use my standard combo lock uh, but i'm not going to put a deadbolt on here um i think I've, done, I've put deadbolts on these campers before and i think it's it doesn't hurt anything and i can certainly add it later if i want but i think it's just kind of a little overkill one other thing we i have to consider on here is that this will fit completely in the bed of the pickup truck so i can shut the tailgate and my truck when i lock the truck it locks the tailgate so uh, now, that, now you wouldn't do that, of course, when you're inside of it, but that will provide an, an extra measure of security, say, if I, you know, park in front of my house or if I'm out of the trail, um, you know, for somebody to physically break in, they would have to, you know, not only defeat the tailgate, but then defeat the door or they'd have to go through some other ways like a window. So I think, I think the single door lock is, is totally sufficient. So let me, uh, let me get this door laid out on the on the uh, table here and we'll take a closer look. All right, and this is the door. I gotta lay down the table, um, but uh, this is the window I'm gonna use. It's just a little porthole window. Um, every camper I've made before, I, I had made a window that was, you know, a, a pretty sizable window, something that would open up and, and, uh, and that made a lot of sense. But I have to admit for me personally, when I just kind of, in a very practical sense, use a campers. I rarely open these windows. And most of the time I created some sort of rack where I could hang a jacket over it because I wanted to cover it for privacy. So on this one, um, I said, you know what, let's just try a porthole window. Um, uh, this one actually does open. Um, I probably, my intention, I might actually create a way to, to where it can't open. All right, and this will give you guys some sense of how I framed out the door. Um, so I used hardwood for the frame, just used some pocket hole screws to hold it together. Uh, these little sections in between are just, uh, cedar. They're just there to kind of help add a little extra rigidity to the, um, cedar planking, which was put over the side. This was put over and put together with that same lamp joint, uh, lap joint method. Right here, this is hardwood and this is, uh, uh, glued to this hardwood frame and then of course uh steadied between these uh cedar portions and this is where the lock set sits so the lock set is encased in hardwood and the door frame this is all hardwood and these stops are hardwood um, i had to cut these by hand this is uh an unusual setup here and uh, when these doors shut um, I've had seals on the other campers. I just found that they don't really work out that well. So I, I take a long time and I custom fit the door. It's actually quite a process. Uh, but what it will happen is when this door shuts, it will shut tight against the stops. And then I even ran a stop across the bottom. So um, that's the method I do it. And that seems to work out the best. Um, I did not cut the slot right here for the latch on the door yet. I'll do that once I permanently attach a door because I want to get the door attached by the hinges. But I try to avoid running those screws for the hinges in and out if I can. I like to just put them in once and leave them in once. Um, obviously, that's a, a high-stress area. I want to make sure that those, uh, 
those holes don't get widened out or stripped in any way. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, just very simple construction. Um, sometimes the door can get twisted a little bit. So, and that happened on this one. So when I built out the frame, I, uh, added some wedges and flattened it out on the table and clamped it down. And then I attached this outside skin here and I left it overnight and that was enough to kind of realign the door and it sits pretty flush here. It does, uh, there's one corner that pops out just a hair, uh, but the way it's, it's set up that when the door latches, it should pull it all tight. So, um, you know, making the door, uh, can be a challenge. Um, I've always done it and I like doing it and, and it works out fine. Plus you can make a really, really strong, but light door. Uh, this is hard to explain. Um, I'll just show you guys later when I put the trim ring in on the inside. Um, I'm not for the purposes of putting the finish on this. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, finish the interior portion of this door. I'll, I'm a, it's going to be insulated um, there's two methods that I might finish it out so it has a nice cosmetic look when it's mounted inside, but I'm not sure yet. I'll touch on that at a, in a later video, but, uh, in a nutshell, that's how that door was put together. So, uh, but kind of keeping it brief, guys, that's about it. Next video you guys will have, if, if my timing goes well, um, it will probably be early to mid next week, and this thing will be uh finished uh the finish i use is a product used for log cabins let's pick up the can here it's a little dusty but it's uh oh, all right it's this uh ppg prolux stuff uh they make a couple varieties this is the log cabin in sighting and i'm going to use the butternut color which is going to be a real dark deep brown this product right here is made for well log homes um, and so it's a perfect, um, product to use on the side of these campers. I've used it since my very first one in different colors and it's a great product. So thanks guys for watching. Next time you see this, this will be done. Oh, one final little piece of housekeeping. Um, I love everybody's comments and they mean a lot. And I put a lot of effort to try to, particularly in these shorter videos, to uh, uh reply to everybody's comments and i feel kind of bad uh two commenters that pretty much commented almost every video uh jerry and alan i'm sure you guys know who you are um you guys have asked me some pretty specific and direct questions and i've answered them a number of times but it's becoming clear that that uh, uh, you guys are not seeing my replies i don't know if that's an error on the uh platform or if if uh, a lot of times if you comment on a YouTube video, you'll get an email or if you comment on a YouTube viewer and a YouTube video and somebody replies to your comment, you'll get an email. So you'll see that. I'm not sure if those emails are going in your junk box or if there's, like I said, maybe an error on the system not going through. But um, just want to let you guys know that uh, I am replying to you. I'm not ignoring you. And I really, really appreciate all of your guys. I mean, in some cases, it's been years of, of dedicated watching. Um so my best recommendation is is to just go back through um, into some of the videos where you guys had posted a comment and you guys were kind of waiting for a response. Um, and you can go to the comment section and you could see where I've responded. So, uh, but thanks guys for everything and I'll see you later.